Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for now, our topic is the nature and effects of obligations. This is chapter 2 of obligations and contract. So we have classifications of obligations based on prestation. First, we have the real obligations. It's an obligation to give. A real obligation to give a specific object. Um, or to, to give a generic object. And then we have personal obligations, which are obligation to do, not to do, or not to give. So we can see there that we have um, positive personal obligation to do or to give and a negative personal obligation, which is not to do or not to give. Um, in compliance with obligations to give, Article 1163 states that every person obliged to give something is also obliged to take care of it with proper diligence of a good father of a family unless the law or the stipulation of the parties requires another standard of care. So my law professor, um, Dean Olan, uh, created an acronym for this. So it's a little bit funny because he calls it Doag Fuaf. Yeah. Doag Fuaf, diligence of a good father of a family. Right. In Article 1164, it states that the creditor has a right to the fruits of the thing from which the time the obligation to deliver it arises. However, he shall acquire no real right over it until the same has been delivered to him. Okay. So we have um So we have here different types of real obligations. So first we have generic um uh, first we have a specific determinate and generic indeterminate. Um, in specific determinate, this is found in Article 1244, where the debtor of the thing cannot compel the creditor to receive a different one. Although the latter may be the same value as or more valuable than that which is due. So, for example, um, in, in a determinate obligation or specific real obligation, um, you said that you will deliver your car with plate number XYZ123. So, therefore, you have to deliver that car with plate number XYZ. You could not deliver a car with plate number ABC456, even if it is um, a better car. Like, for example, the XYZ is a um, Mitsubishi Mirage, while the ABC is a Mercedes-Benz. So, even if it has a valuable, um, more valuable than the other what is due must be delivered so you can also read 1163 where it states that um, also obliged to take care of it with the proper diligence of a good father of a family so yun nga yung sinabi ko kanina um, the law requires except when the law requires another or when the agreement states another now while in generic indeterminate so it's easy all right, the creditor cannot demand a thing of superior quality. Neither can the debtor deliver a thing of inferior quality. So, dito, for example, um, the agreement was that X would give an iPhone 13 to Y. So, whatever color it is, then if X gives iPhone 13 to Y, then... Um, the obligation would be deemed as met. Okay. So, that's what it means. In specific determinate as to the accessories, um, all accessor accessions and accessories of the thing, although not mentioned, is included. So, for example... Um, you are selling a second-hand car and that second-hand car has bumpers, it has uh, speakers, and so basically it is improved. No? So that means that since it is a determinate thing and during the time of the um, contract was made, was that those accessories was in it. 
then you have to deliver the accessions and the accessories. Okay. Now, um, also in specific determinant, in Article 1165, Paragraph 1, in Article 1170, it states that liable for damages in case of breach by the debtor due to delay, fraud, negligence, and kototo. Okay. What's kototo? You will learn that. Okay. Okay. Now, in generic indeterminate, it states that liable for damages again for breach due to delay, fraud, no negligence, and kototo. So, creditor may ask that the obligation be complied with it at the expense of the debtor. Okay. So, let's discuss about the duties of obligation to give a determinate thing. So, to give a determinate thing, you have to preserve or take care of the thing due, deliver the fruits of the thing, deliver its accessories and accessions, deliver the thing itself as to kinds of delivery um, stated in 1497 and 1501 and answer for damages in case of non-fulfillment of a breach. So, the duties of debt are in obligation to deliver a generic thing Okay, is number one. Uh, deliver a thing which is of the quality intended by the parties considering the purpose of the obligation and the other circumstances and be liable for damages in case of fraud, negligence, or delay in the performance of obligation or contravention of the tenor thereof. Okay? Now, uh, the remedies of creditor when debtor fails to comply. Okay, we have three remedies. Number one, you can uh, demand for the specific performance of the thing. Um, then we can also have rescission or cancellation. Or we can ask for payment of damages. So we are talking about a generic thing here. Okay. So, just remember, um, in Article 1165, when what is to be delivered is a determinate thing, the creditor, in addition to the right granted by him in Article um, 1170, may compel the debtor to make the delivery. Okay, That's for a determinate thing. While for an indeterminate or generic, he may ask that the obligation be complied with at the expense of the debtor. Okay, if the ob if the obligor delays or has promised to deliver the same thing or two to more persons who do not have the same interest, he shall be responsible for any fortuitous event until he has effected the delivery. Now, we have different types of delivery. We have A, it's an actual or traditional delivery, and we have B, which is a constructive or implied delivery. So, we call constructive such as traditio symbolica. As to when the keys of a bodega are given, tradisho longa manu, where the delivery by mere consent or the pointing of an object, tradisho brevi manu, a pro possessor of a thing not as an owner becomes the possessor as owner. For example, a tenant who buy the house, he is renting. So that is tradisho brevi manu. In tradisho constitutum poserium, so that's the opposite of brevi manu. While the tradition by the execution of legal forms and solemnity is also um, called kinds of delivery. Okay? So, let us discuss um, in personal obligation, there are such things we call as positive and negative. So, in article um, 1244, in positive, the act, the XXX act, XXX cannot be substituted by another act against obliges will. So, that's the positive. Uh, for negative, the forbearance cannot be substituted by another forbearance against the obliges will. Okay. Let's talk about Article 1167 and 1168. In the positive, um, you have the obligation performed or executed at the expense of the obligor. 
um, and ask what has been poorly done be undone Okay, recover damages except when the personal qualification of the obligor is the principal motive of the obligation. Now, in 1168, if the obligor does not uh, does what he has been forbidden, obligee can have it undone at, um, at obligor's expense. So, except when um, effects of the act which is forbidden are definite in character. It is physically or legally possible to undo what has been undone. Okay. In 1167, in obligations to do, the remedies of creditor, creditor if debtor fails to do is to have the obligation performed by himself or by another at debtor's expense plus damages. Okay. Now, there's no specific performance, no involuntary servitude. So, kinds of breaches of obligation we have involuntary. So, the debtor is unable to comply with his obligation because of fortuitous event. And the debtor is not liable for damages. Breach of contract. Let's define breach of contract. Okay. It is the failure of a party without any legal reason to comply with the terms of a contract or perform any promise that forms either a part or the whole of it. So the parties took on reciprocal obligations. These are obligations that arise from the same cause such that the obligation of one is dependent upon that of the other. Okay. Um, the reciprocal obligation in this case was Lexburg's payment of the... Ah, no, 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 no. Let, let me not talk about that. Um, but you can read Villeray Planners and Builders versus Lexburg so that... Um, you can learn from that case. So, it's just, the gist of it is that the law provides that the obligation of a person who fails to fulfill it shall be executed at that person's cost. Okay? So, if you breach the contract, then you have to pay the cost of it. The CAA um, was correct in ruling here that Villeray should be held liable for the amount Paid by Lexber to another contractor to complete the works. So, that's the gist of it. But, um, if you'd like to read, you can do so. Voluntary. Okay. The debtor in the performance of the obligation is guilty of default. Okay. Or fraud, negligence, breach through contravention of tenor of the obligation. So, debtor is liable for damages. So, a default delay in the fulfillment of the obligation with respect to time must either be malicious or negligent, okay? Or if due to inadvertence without any malice or negligence, the obligor cannot be liable under Article 1170. Requisites in order to consider the obligor in default. Obligation is demandable and already liquidated. The obligor or debtor delays performance. The debtor, the creditor requires performance judicially or extrajudicially. So we have kinds of default. So we have mora solvendi, and we have in in mora solvendi the, the delay of the debtor to perform his obligation. Okay, so. There is no mora solvendi in a negative obligation, in a natural obligation, or in an alternate obligation. Then we have uh, mora accipiendi. Okay. The delay of the creditor in accepting the delivery of the thing, which is the object of the obligation. So, ayaw niyang tanggapin. The offer of performance by the creditor who has the required capacity, okay, offer is to comply with the prestation as it should be performed, and creditor refuses the performance without just cost. So, our remedy is to consign it in court and keep it um, to himself, or not, but he will not be liable for damages. And then we have the compensation moray. So, this is the delay of the parties or obligors in reciprocal obligation. 
So, rules on default. So, we have um, in a unilateral obligation, the demand is necessary. No demand, no delay. So, mere expiration of the period fixed by the parties will not cause delay. So, you have to remember that. No demand, no delay. Except when there is a stipulation about it. So, we have, um, you can read Pantaleon versus American Express. Okay. You can also read Barsaga versus Court of Appeals. Lorenzo Shipping Corporation versus BJ Mattel. Okay. Let's talk about reciprocal obligation. So, here, fulfillment by both parties should be simultaneous. One party incurs delay from the moment the other party fulfills his obligation. While he himself does not comply or is not ready to comply in a proper manner. Ibig sabihin, reciprocal, both of them have an obligation to each other. It's maybe um, one, so it, it could be that X will do the service and Y would pay for it. So, um, X doing the service is a reciprocal obligation to Y paying the service. So, that's a reciprocal obligation. So, you can know more of that in this case, Solar Harvest versus the Val Corrugated Carton Corporation. And then next, we have fraud or dolo. So, um, we know fraud from RPC. It's the same. Um, it's a conscious and intentional proposition to evade the normal fulfillment of an obligation. So, we have to um, distinguish civil frauds. Okay. So, we have dolo incidente and dolo or dolo causante and dolo in the performance okay. so Cathay Pacific Airways versus Vasquez maganda rin to itong case na to maganda to kasi um, dito kasi sa case na to uh, uh, nagalit sila Vasquez na Napaupo sila sa first class. Yun. So, you can read that. And then, negligence. So, it's an any voluntary act or omission. There being no malice, which prevents normal fulfillment of an obligation. So, you can check out Meralco versus Ramoy. So, Jimmy Co. versus Broadway Motor Corporation. So... In Jimmy Co, it's it's more on a uh, fortuitous event. So fortuitous event is um, to be considered a fortuitous event. It must be proved and established that the event was the act of God, or was done solely by third party, and that the claimants or persons alleged to be negligent has any participation. Okay. So, you can check out this, ano. Okay. So, there are, th these are just mm, mostly cases. Okay. So, bridge through contravention of tenor of contract. It includes not only an illicit act, which impairs the strict and faithful fulfillment of the obligation, but also every kind of defective performance. Okay. So, the defense using fortuitous event in Article 1174, a fortuitous event must be an act of God. Okay. Now, on the requisite, of um, using fortuitous event as a defense. So, yan. Um, event must be independent of the will of the obligor. It must be either unforeseeable or inevitable. So, kahit daw na kikinitan nyo na, hindi naman natin may iwasan. Um, must be of such a character as to render it impossible for the obligor to fulfill his obligation in normal manner an obligor must be free from any participation in the aggravation of the injury resulting to the obligee.
Um, for Stuitos event, so these are known as extraordinary events, which are not foreseeable or not avoidable. So it's it's events that could not be foreseen or even though foreseen is inevitable. So there. The very measures adopted by um, a person citing fortuitous event is that the possibility of danger was not only foreseeable, but actually foreseen um, and was not caso fortuito. Okay. So, in case of a fortuitous event, then you would have no liability. Okay. So, these are cases that you can read in order to know more about that. So, next is 1176. So, extinguishment of interest and prior installments. So, this is more about usurious transactions and interest. So, usurious transactions shall be given, shall be governed by a special laws. But, the usury law is suspended as of now. So, next. Remedy of creditor to protect, to protect credit. O, oh, ito. The remedies. So, remedies um, will be discussed. Ayon. So, remedies. Um, first remedy is session. So, this is to exhaust the property in possession of the debtor, generally by attachment. So, it's subject to exemptions provided by law. So, dito daw, dahil insolvent na or wala na pambayad si um, debtor, kukuha tayo ng kanyang ari-arian or pag-aari. Okay. Then, that's um, ano session okay. so in next we have action pauliana so in action pauliana it's to impugn all the acts which the debtor may have done to defraud them by means of recessory action at the instance of the creditor who is prejudiced so mag action pauliana kayo para ma-impugn nyo lahat ng acts ng debtor which may have um, done to defraud them by means of a recessory action. So, last is... Oh, wait. So, action polyana, just to further discuss it, um, it presupposes a judgment and um, it presupposes the issue once by the trial court of a writ of execution for the satisfaction of the judgment and the failure of the sheriff to enforce and satisfy the judgment. So, that's it. And the requisite of action, Pauliana, is that the plaintiff asking for reception has a credit prior the alienation, although demandable later. So that the debtor has made a subsequent contract conveying a patrimonial benefit to a third person and that the creditor has no other legal remedy um, to satisfy his claim but would also benefit by rescission of the conveyance to the third person. And that the act being impugned is fraudulent. That the third person who received the property conveyed if by onerous title has been an accomplice in the fraud. Okay, and lastly, we have action subrogatoria. So here, to be subrogated to all the rights and actions of the debtor, save those which are inherent in his person. Um, this is stated in Article 1177. So it states that the creditors, after having pursued the property in possession of the debtor, to satisfy their claims, may exercise all the rights and bring all the actions of the latter for the same purpose, save those which are inherent in his person, they may also impugn the acts which the debtor may have done to defraud them. So, in action subrogatoria, for example, A is indebted to B. And then, 
um, so si A may utang daw siya kay B pero si A hindi na siya maka um, parang there's a third person na sasagip sa kanya ganun ganun siya so so sige li liwanagin natin For example, si A, may utang siya kay B. And then, si B, may utang siya kay C. So, when A pays the debt of B to C, um, nasobrogate na yung kanyang utang. So, example ulit, A, may utang siya na 500,000 kay B. Si B, may utang na 500,000 kay C. Kung si A, nagbayad ng 500,000 kay C, it's as if nasobrogate na yung kanyang utang or obligation. So, that's it. So, transmissibility of rights acquired by virtue of an obligation, Article 1178. So, the general rule, the rights acquired by virtue of an obligation are transmissible in character. So, natatransmit daw, except when prohibited by law, which are purely personal in character. So, yan. Um, when prohibited by personal qualification or circumstances of the transferor, which is material ingredient attendant in the obligation. And lastly, when, the, when prohibited by stipulation of the parties. So, yan yung ating Article 1178 regarding transmissibility. So, um, obligation may be transmissible, but there are a few exceptions as provided by the law. Okay. So, that is chapter 2 of Obligations and Contracts. Um, thank you so much for watching. Okay, so, chapter, we have discussed chapter 2 and then after chapter 2, so, chapter 2 is about the nature and effects and of obligations. After that, we'll have another video, which is chapter 3, which discusses about different kinds of obligations.